Audio Jungle. Welcome to our discussion today. We are going to talk about secular morality. But before we delve into the topic, we would like to introduce ourselves. Starting with your table, my name is Dokas Solita. I am an atheist, a rational thinker, a philosopher, a humanist, and overall lover of life. Adams, atheist, and preaching. Hello, I'm Nyambura Kimani. I am atheist agnostic and also a humanist. I'm Morris, I'm Joey. Uh, atheist, more importantly, humanist. Hello, my name is Eston, and I'm a prethinker, an atheist, and also I am a humanist. Hello, my name is Moyoki, I'm a prethinker, atheist, and a vegan. Hi, I'm Kimi Wainanga, I'm an atheist. Hi, I'm Ediel Kilonzi, I'm an atheist and also a human. Hello, I'm Tai, I'm agonistic or a skeptical. Thank you all for those amazing introductions. The first thing we like to do is to define terms, secular and morality. But before we even get into it, why is it necessary to have this discussion? I remember during my deconversion process, it took me approximately two years to leave Christianity for good, to just cut those guys completely and change my identity. And during the process, questions would arise in my mind about the good things that can come from religion. And one of them, I thought, was morality. I kept asking myself, if I leave Jesus and Christianity, how will I define my morality? And uh, we often hear such concepts from the people of God or the followers of religion. So I had to dig deep in order to find out what this perspective entails. Yeah, it isn't all gloom and doom <coughs> and dungeon and dragons among people who are non-believers. So that, that information is what we will be sharing with you today. The, the information that I found during my research and my deconversion process. But before I get into it, I'd like to toss the ball back to the members. How do we define morality? What is what does humanity mean? For me, morality means the maximization of well-being, human well-being. Um, this is mostly inspired by some habits, uh, especially in the moral landscape, and a bit of the the other book, Bed of Faith. I love the I love this concept of morality, whereby it's about maximizing the well-being of humans. And it starts from a very simple uh, assumptions. We prefer life than death. We prefer health and sleep. We prefer fullness than hunger. We prefer relief and pain. So if you start with all those assumptions, if, uh, if we don't want pain for itself, we don't pay for it, we don't want And therefore we are mm-hmm. let behave in a way that we minimize pain for each other. You don't want to die, you don't want the other person dead, he doesn't. So you agree. Let's not kill each other. And based on all those assumptions, <clears throat> we come up with a morality concept or a way in which uh, a way in which you agree. Let me minimize this negative. Maximize what is good for the humanity. And I think that's a very good uh, way to see that from a, from a humanist perspective. From a, I'm sure from a religious perspective, it will be much different. Okay, so Maurice is defining morality as the maximization of well-being. Can somebody else have a different definition? Yes. Okay. We are saying behave the standards which you have made us adhere to. Standards of behavior yeah. that humans yeah. adhere to. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
as what the Morris are saying is to care for well-being. So anything that is reducing reducing harm, that is what we can define as moral. Oh, okay. Reduction of harm. Now, the dictionary defines morality as the ability to decipher bad from good, right or wrong. It, it is simply the process of determining what is good or bad. So what the gentlemen have added is perhaps a more nuanced version of morality that might pertain to secularists or humanists. So that brings us to the next part of the definitions, which is secular morality. What is secular morality? How do we understand I think and maybe that's what the what Morris has said. So I know secular morality, we don't have like uh, we have many other things that are there in hmm? secular morality. So he said maximizing well-being, but there are others who also define it as minimizing suffering. Mm. Just as to put that in there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and to understand much better what secular morality is, you have to contrast it from the religious or any other form of morality. Uh, secular morality is us arriving in the social construct. We agree, let's do this, let's not do it. Uh, as opposed to the other set of morality where there's a authority, a person or a book or a concept or a god who is telling you what is doing. And that is why in most cases we find that religious people will always argue that morality is objective. For us, we argue that morality is subjective. But they are, we can come up with objective assessment. For Christian, it's objective because if God says do not leave this world, if you leave this world, you have God against God. From a secular perspective, you ask yourself, what is in the best interest? What maximizes the well being of the community? Lifting the point from then you agree, let's do what is in our best interest. Uh, so Maurice has gone a little deeper on those concepts and uh, he's, he's brought up the idea of uh, social consensus and uh, yeah, whatever else he has added. Now, I am interested in finding from the oh, yes, I also need to add my definition because my definition was consulted from the master, Google. <laughs> <laughs> Not chat <yet>, GPT. <laughs> hey, very soon, that should be the benchmark. <laughs> so Google says that secular morality is morality based on a non-religious perspective. To be secular is to be non-religious. And then morality has been defined it is determining what is good or bad, bad, what is right or wrong. So that's what we are working with. Now, before we get into the principles of secular morality, how do you as atheists define your morality? Morris has tried to allude to it a, a bit. We get a little deeper, but before we do, let's first find out why is it we have rejected religious morality? What is wrong? with the, the Christian perspective, the Muslim perspective on morality. Um, anybody? So maybe I can say why I reject the, uh, I can say the Christian morality was that you find that uh, first of all it has inconsistency and it relies first of all on an outdated book that is the Bible and it relies again on interpretation based on this book that has been translated, translated, retranslated, edited, translated <laughs> from a source that you don't know. So that is what led me to reject that form of morality. And while going through that book, there are some things that I personally found immoral, but this book deems moral. Maybe we will get later to talk about the genocide and all that. That was actually apparently commanded by God. So could we start so, with inconsistency? 
Yes. Give us maybe an example or two of some biblical inconsistency in the moral arena. So maybe you can just go to a simple thing like uh, murder. Is murder right? I'd say, even though I say in most cases murder is wrong, maybe I, with a few exceptions like self defense, I'd say murder is mostly wrong, something like genocide is wrong. But then you find the murder, ten commandments do not murder. Few verses later, Israelites are being instructed <laughs> to murder a whole population of people. So, the exception of Vikings. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. so he has mentioned genocide, yeah, the killing of people rampantly as an example of why he has a problem with religious morality. We look here, please. Yeah, we can live in our beings. We have a conscience in us. Yeah, yeah. So I don't need an invisible being to tell me what to do because we have, we have a conscience and it's very active in human beings. Not a government. So I don't need. And something I'm not seeing, shall need to do. Right. In fact, because that thing is invincible and undetectable, all we can deduce is that it's human beings who are speaking and claiming that it is God who is speaking on their behalf. Hence that reason. Yes. Um the question was on this Bible morality. Yes, yes. What is our objection? to biblical morality or religious morality in general. And please be specific, give me examples of things that you really have problems with. Um, <clears throat> see, when I was living in religion, uh, I had problems with the Bible in terms of a uh, few issues that I thought, at uh, first I was religious, then I was So this issue, most of the time I would be fetish, you know, the same argument in context, you know, you know, we are reading a lot of context. No, that's not, that's the wrong translation. Let's go to King James Version, you know, all those kind of arguments. But then there are things I put, there's somewhere I drew the line. And I'll give you five. Number one is murder. Number two is the history of uh, how the Bible treats you. Number three, slavery. And I think that was what broke the camera down. I could not start slavery, especially slavery starts the lame when you just hear slavery, slavery. Until you read in detail what was happening in charter slavery in America, uh, how people are, how slavery was happening in South America, in Jamaica. It, it was the worst of the worst of the treatment of human, worse than any animal has ever been treated by human. The other thing is rape. I, I take that seriously. And finally, the, uh, the human side. I can't stand human sacrifice. And connected to that is the general uh, treatment of women as the meaning of women. I could not defend some of those. Especially when the Bible does not imply it explicitly state go kill the Americans. Uh, slavery, you know that's chapter 21, chapter 20. It's telling you exactly what to do, where to buy slaves, who how to beat them. What to do if you give them they die within a certain time, and what to do if they don't die within that time? I can't say there's no way I would defend that without uh, without uh, having a conflict in my country. And then, uh, and the other reason I want to say that the reason why there's a big argument uh, or why you see Christian uh, or religious people try to say the Bible does not say what it is or Quran does not say what it is in terms of morality. If the, if the demonstration to the superiority of the secular morality. Because you know that slavery is wrong, but you have a book here that tells you where you can go and get this slave and beat them and what. You know consciously, based on secular morality, this is wrong. But because you can't just fight and you know it's immoral to just try to just fight, what do you do? You try to still make people think that it does not say what they would say. So that also demonstrates the supremacy. Okay. And the, the, the final thing is that the religious morality is not objectively arrived at. It's not something you start from, we are here, uh, we're here in a group, let's not slap each other. You know, it's, and then we say, oh, actually that's good because I don't want to be slapped, so let me not slap someone. No, this is someone from somewhere saying, don't do this. And now you ask yourself things like, what is the problem with 
wearing mixed fabric clothes. What's wrong? Like, what is essentially is that? What is wrong with that? Mm. Because when someone just know Nabitu Zakia, Mekulabitu Zakia, just say, ah, guys, that cause I don't like mixed fabric. But ideally, we should have objective clarity where we look at what is the human best interest. Of course, there are some objections to secular morality, especially now that you say it's the maximization of the person. One of the common objections you get is, so is it okay to mistreat animal? Because you're maximizing human welfare. And it's a wide, it's a very huge debate because uh, it brings the issues of big guns. So they make that case that uh, morality should be good. How you know. The only objection I have is people who mistreat animals is most likely that person has mental issues and they are able to do the same as a human being. But it's still a debate. But so far, even with the finale question, secular morality is vastly superior, demonstrably superior to any other form of morality, especially not more, uh, religious morality. And finally, I don't even understand why we call religious religious morality. If religious morality includes things that allow murder, slavery, blah, blah, why is it morality? Maybe we should call it religious immorality. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you, Maurice, for that. I have a few rebuttals to what Kidlotti said and Maurice. I'm playing devil's advocate and speaking on behalf of Christian apologists. For Kilonzi, the Christian apologist would come to you and say, but what if those people were really evil? The ones where God ordered the Israelites to kill them indiscriminately. They, they were really evil and they were cannibals. They were doing these terrible things. They deserved that kind of treatment, that kind of punishment. Yeah, Kilonzi will answer that. And also for Maurice, Christian apologists like to say, but that is the Old Testament. We are in a new dispensation. <laughs> yeah, so. so maybe to answer that, and I think I like it. It's like uh, basic statistics. Why were these people evil? Did they not have access to some laws? If they didn't have, whose fault is that? Who? <laughs> 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 that guy. <laughs> it, it, it goes direct to the other guy. He, he didn't provide the law. And statistic, statistically speaking, you can't have an entire population of guys who are wrong and who are doing wrong things by virtue of them loving. Statistic, statistically speaking, there must be a few outliers. There are very evil people and very good people. And some of us fall in the middle of this bell curve. So there is no way you can tell me such a thing happened. And sometimes you ask the apology, the apologist, let's say something like the Amalekite uh, massacre. Why did it happen? Some of them don't know. Those who have read the Bible will tell you, you know what? In Exodus, the Amalekites provoked the Israelites unprovoked and went and caught them and therefore that's why God decided that they would be wiped out. But so many centuries did God wait, not one, not two. It means the people who committed the actual crime were did way not. dead. Mm -hmm. So there is absolutely no justification for some of these things. And if they were really that wicked, God could have stopped the hearts of the wicked one. Why do you need guys to go again and fight your wants for you? <laughs> So that's what they can say. Yes, <laughs> he solicited people, humans, to do his dirty work for him. Yeah. If he's divine, all he needed to do was to wave a magic wand, cool, and the Amalekites would have vanished into dim air. Yeah. Yes, it's funny how we don't have a single Amalekite. Okay, well, I'll send them one. <laughs> <laughs> then you guys, hey, step up, you guys. What are you always saying? It's something in West Africa. Yeah. There's a church here, it's a slave market. A place for slaves here, and a church there. So that's just bits of it. A church here, slaves are kept just near them. So they used to worship God and get their slaves to be taken to America. Yeah. Quite a contradiction. Yeah. But Maurice, continue with the question that I posed to you. So, yeah, on that uh, slave market, I don't know. I don't know. Slavery is normally my one of the worst things to go to because it's very direct in Exodus. They don't even mean swear. Exodus chapter 21 is divided into 
uh, first but first few verses are how you get a, a Jewish and slaving a Jew. And then there's Jews by uh, the other community, the Gentiles. So for Jews, I think you can read them as the first Jew to the market here, there's some people you read after seven years. But for the rest, it's for the rest of their age. But uh, to go to the question, <coughs> Uh, why the New Testament? Now, two objections to that. First of all, things like slavery. Because the argument is slavery, Jesus corrected some of these things. Jesus never spoke again about slavery. Other uh, masters, uh, slaves, they were not. So, if he would objected, if so, Jesus, in my own uh, assumption, was, uh, was a huge improvement from the morality we see in the New Testament. But still, we can judge him from what he did not say. Because if you live in an era where everybody is owning slaves, and you think slaves are immoral, that, that would be one of the things that you see. Jesus was very silent on that. That's assuming he existed. Now, number two, let's now go to uh, the Old Testament. Let's take, a, let's take slavery. Exodus chapter 21. You know, go and... You can go and take it from here. You can go and uh, do these things. You can beat them. Assume that was the Old Testament. The question is, was God okay with slavery even for a day? Even that day, he wrote that book. Assume he changed the next day. Was God okay with slavery even for a day? And why would the unchanging God change his mind later? About slavery or about genocide or about whatever. So the fact that God because you see in um, the argument, slavery because it's very explicit. If you read chapter Exodus chapter 21, the first verse, it says, and these are the laws you shall give unto them. Who is this saying these words? These are Babatis. This is the book is written by Moses. This is God telling Moses, and these are the laws you shall give. Which means at the point that God is saying these words, he's okay with whatever follows down there. For the whole so even if after the third chapter God changed his mind and said, No, don't say he was okay with slavery when that chapter was being written. And that tells you, even if he came and said later on, it's too late. You are God, you should have moved back. And that is exactly why I don't think. And number two, and finally, if it's the Old Testament, then what is it doing there? You move it. <laughs> why are you teaching it? Eh? <laughs> and if you don't believe in it, why are you saying to other modern commandments? They are all in the Old Testament. <laughs> no, no, remove it, remove them. And then now let's say the Bible is only the New Testament. Then now we can debate that. We also have a lot of big issues, like women. Uh, <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,